Einstein, I guess, gave the equation E equals mc squared. So be it. Today science believes matter, energy is real. And consciousness is perhaps some kind of mystical phenomenon. Comes and goes. Vedanta's position is just the opposite. Chaitanya, Chit, pure consciousness is the ultimate truth. And matter, energy, etc. are epiphenomena. Or they are Ayaram Gayaram. They come and go. This body is Ayaram Gayaram. And you are what is eternal. This is the Vedanta's reassuring statement. So Maharshi says that Aham Ekasat Tat, this Indriya Deha, etc. Asat. Continuing, he said, Sattva Bhasika Chitkva Vetara. Sattva Bhasika Chitkva Vetara. Sattaya hi chit, chittaya yaham. Sattaya hi chit, chittaya yaham. Sattva Bhasika Chitkva Vetara. Sattva Bhasika. Sattaya hi chit, chittaya yaham. Sattaya hi chit, There is sometimes a philosophical question. In the Vedanta, in this Upanishadic wisdom, basically Vedanta is a name for Upanishads. Vedanta nama Upanishad Pramanam. Then that meaning of Vedanta got extended to a whole lot of other works. Tattva Bodha, Atma Bodha, Viveka Jodamani or Panchadashi or some Aparokshanu Bhuti or why Sanskrit works? Works of Vivekananda, works of so many masters who more or less reflect the Upanishadic wisdom. All of them came to be known as Vedanta. You may be reading a hundred percent English book, self-knowledge, and somebody asks, what are you reading? You may say, I am reading Vedanta. You are not wrong. Though it is not Upanishad, it is restatement of the Upanishadic wisdom. But originally, primarily, the Upanishads, which are part of the four Vedas, were known as Vedanta. All right. The Vedanta's position sometimes seems to say we are Sat. Sat means pure existence. Not existence as this body, as Mr. So and so, or as Miss So and so, Mrs. So and so. No, no. That is all some described existence. Pure existence is the basis of all kinds of described existence. In Sanskrit, moment you describe some existence, this is a tree, that is a rock. So describing something as rock, something as tree is called sa vishesha satta. Existence satta with a certain vishesha, rock, tree. And pure existence is nirvishesha satta. What is common to the rock and the tree? What is common even to animate and inanimate forms of existence is pure sat. Some other places the Vedanta says you are chit. Chit means pure consciousness. So you and I may wonder what is sat and what is chit? Sat chit. I was teaching in Bombay and every day I used to say you are sat chit. There was a girl from Phoenix, Arizona, of Indian origin. She had come to attend some classes in Bombay. This was 1999, in Bombay, Chinmaya Ashwa. Front row she used to sit. We had accepted her, okay, two months. Very mischievous girl, 32 year old or so. One morning, after the morning class, I went to my cabin and I was having my breakfast. This really happened, I am slightly dramatizing it. <laughs> she got to my cabin like a storm and said, Swamiji, I came to learn spirituality. What are you teaching every day? 
I said, what am I teaching? I'm teaching Vedanta. No, what you are telling us every day is very disturbing. I said, who is this? Why is she saying like that? Why? She showed me her notes. Every page has a date. 99, July 1, 99, July 2, July 3. Morning class notes, my classes she has. Everywhere she has written, Swami Chidananji once more told us, you are such shit. <laughs> you are such shit. You are such shit. Shiva Shiva. <laughs> Miss Shiva's girl. Of course, we both had a hearty laugh. And then I told her, look, here onward, till I breathe my last. Whenever I pronounce Satchit, I will be extra careful. Even those who are hard of hearing or some kind of you know, nobody should mistake it as such shit. I take extra care. Sat Chit. <laughs> now the question is, what are the Sat and Chit, existence and consciousness? Are there, one is right side of Brahman and another left side of Brahman? What are we talking? Brahman is not some kind of physical object. Are there two aspects of Brahman that is playing with language? Really, Brahman, that ultimate truth, Shandokya Upanishad says, Ekam Eva Advitiyam, it is one without a second. There is nothing like upside or downside or right side or left side or subtler part and grosser part. In no way you can make a division in Brahman. Therefore, Maharshi says, Sattva Bhasika Chitkva Vetara, he asks a question, can there be consciousness other than existence, as though throwing light on existence? In fact, if consciousness is other than existence, philosophically that consciousness would become non-existent, because it is other than existence. And if existence were other than consciousness, that such existence, which is other than consciousness, would become inert and both are undesirable. A non-existent consciousness and an inert existence. Therefore he says, Sattaya hi chit. Sat itself is chit, chit itself is I. Therefore the nature of pure and true I is at once Sat and chit. Sat and Chit are not two at all, they are one. This is another high plateau teaching. Sat and Chit are one only and there are no two in whatever way. Two is not acceptable in this Vedanta. Therefore, this is called Advaita Vedanta. Shankara's interpretation of the Upanishads is a school of thought. Ultimately, some of you may not be very much at peace with it. I, I don't mind. But a lot of people are highly inspired by it. Vivekananda, Ramatirtha, Sinmayananda, whole lot of masters, whole lot of people are so thrilled by Advaita. But let me be frank with you. There are many people who somehow say this Advaita is just over-intellectualism. In Shankara's time, he was able to pull along everybody. Two hundred years later, Ramanuja Acharya came and he just said, this doesn't make sense. Therefore, he talked of a different school of thought, Vishishtadvaita. God is whole, we are part. Another two hundred years later, Madhvacharya came on the horizon and he dismissed Ramanuja also. He said, all this is not true. This is all imagination. The truth is simple, he said. God is God, you are you. God is Prabhu, you are Dasa. Therefore, and they were Vaishnavas, both Ramanuja and uh, Madhva, God for them meant Vishnu. So, Ramanuja Acharya's philosophy, qualified monism, he is Vishishtadvaita, and Mahavishnu is supreme. And all of us are at best parts 
we are players in his game. He is the producer and director. In Madhvacharya's Dvaita philosophy, Dvaita Siddhanta, Udupi is the headquarters for it traditionally. But today, worldwide, there is a Dvaita organization, you know, and in the corporate language, very successful, is ISKCON. Hare Krishna. Go to Hare Krishna and talk Advaita. They will look at you and they will tell you, you need fixing. <laughs> Come here, we will fix you. We will set you, we will straighten you up. To say Brahma alone is and it is all appearance, etc. is not true. This is real. Madhvacharya said, this creation is real, it's beautiful, it is Hari's creation. Mahavishnu has created it. Who are you to question its reality? So there are three schools of thought. Advaita, where Brahma alone is true. And if you don't want to call the world and your own personality unreal, you may say they are relatively real. In higher wisdom, you will have a totally different understanding of yourself. This appeals to a lot of people. A lot of people, they, they say, a lot of others say, no, I am servant. Sri Man Madhvamate Hari Parakaraha Satyam Jagat. There is a shloka which gives nine cornerstones of Advaita philosophy. So in every town, I am sure in your town also, if you look around, there will be some staunch Dvaitis. Some will be having their allegiance either by family background or by their exposure to ISKCON or some such teachers. Maybe uh, there is one Swamiji who is very popular in US. Does he come to this town? Mukundananda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he lives, I think, uh, in yeah. Dallas quite a bit. Yeah. So I respect him and I hope he respects me. Uh, he belongs to that lineage, that Sampradha. I respect all the three Acharyas. Because what you find, having raised this topic, if anybody follows that love of Hari, he is bound to go to great heights of inner transformation. Ultimately, you know, whether the ego vanishes in Brahma, as Advaita says, or the ego remains a devoted servant of God, either way it is way above how you and I are living now. In our ignorant way of living, we are so concerned with I, me and my and there is nothing much divine. Therefore, Madhvacharya's surrender to Vishnu with the full submission and acknowledgement of we are way down here and you are way up there. Ramanuja's you know, outlook of every jiva, you and me, are a part of God and Shankara's you know, rather sweeping statement, extraordinary insight that we are actually no different from God. This, all these are way above, if I may say, on a scale of thousand, one to thousand, all these three are in the top fifty, nine fifty to thousand. Whereas our egoistic life where we are worried about wealth and health and fame and name and, and uh, comparison, competition, all kinds of, you know, ego hurt. We are somebody among us is hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Nobel Prize winners are also all these, you know, eminent people. All of them are way down. Any of the three and various other combinations, Vallabhacharya, Nimbarkacharya, Christianity, you all know some good Christians. Some good Christians you see some beauty in their life. If there is a submission to God without fanaticism and so on. So here we have, we are Sat and Chit different, he says. Sat and Chit are one and we are that Chit. Now before we take a short break for question answer, let us have a look at the next two verses where the relation between God and man is taken up by Ramana himself. And let me say in advance, Ramana goes not by choice but by his own 
inside his own experience he goes by shankara ramana not because he was trained in some advaita ashram he was he didn't receive any training but somehow his realization his sakshatkar his anubhuti was such that he in fact is unbelievably in line with adi shankara's come a commentary on the upanishads ईश जीवर्वेश सत्स्वभाव वस्तु केवल ईश जीवर्वेशिद सत्स्वभाव वस्तु केवल वेशहानत स्वात्मदर्शन ईशदर्शन 